Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do kind of a spotlight for space nonfiction that has been released in 2020 because, as I've mentioned in a few previous videos, I've been reading a few space related nonfiction, mainly new releases of this year. And I've been really enjoying sort of exploring that uh, that part of science writing or science related writing. But I've been doing a lot of research into the books being published this year, nonfiction books <laughs> that is, um, that in some way deal with space as its central theme. And so I thought that I would um, talk about the, the three books that I have already read that are space nonfiction published this year and also uh, mention a few others that I'm excited to read and that you might be interested in if you're looking for recent space nonfiction. Um, so as I said, all of these are uh, 2020 releases. Uh, they are probably not all of the books that have been published this year. They are just the books that I've heard of um, that I've come across in my, my browsing. Um, and if you have any other uh, recommendations or any other books you know of has, that has come out this year, uh, feel free to link, um, feel free to mention them in the uh, comments below. The first book is Once Upon a Time I Lived on Mars by Kate Green. This came out in July and this is all about Kate Green's experience of being part of a team that was put in a Mars simulation experiment. Basically the point of the experiment was to sort of recreate a environment that would be reminiscent of an astronaut traveling to, to Mars. And the point of this experiment was to collect data specifically related to the psychological challenges of living in this sort of environment over a longer period of time. The experiment itself I think was four months, but obviously uh, someone traveling to Mars would be a lot longer in this sort of isolated and um, uh, very uh, narrow environment um, and some of the things that she's talking about is sort of the boredom of living uh, so um, so in a, such a sort of um, repetitive lifestyle of this isolation she talks about the small frustrations uh, with living with other people in this environment and how they could become major blow-ups blow uh, because of the lack of sort of uh, space to walk away from a situation that frustrated you and so she's talking much more about uh, the experience of an astronaut uh, in, in that sense, although she's not actually an astronaut, her, uh, astronaut herself, she's a science writer. But she also talks about Mars exploration and how that has changed over time with our understanding of Mars as a planet and general space exploration and how Mars exploration sort of fits into that um, larger history. Um, and she talks about her own life as well. I really enjoyed especially the Mars aspects of this book. I've written reviews for all of the three books that I've already read uh, because I've got them all as review copies so I, those will all be linked below. Uh, I have also done a video uh, chat about this book because there were a few things that just felt very timely for me, with lockdown being a fresh memory still. The next book I read was The Last Stargazers by Emily Levesque. This is an astronomer's uh, book, so she is uh, actively working as an astronomer and she talks about her um, entry into stargazing as a profession. This is much more on the scientific and technical side of things. Uh, she talks about the uh, a lot of this book is talking about what a, an astronomer actually does and um, both her personal challenges in this work as well as the field's development from the early days until the present time and especially a sort of a look ahead into um, the future possibilities of new technology constantly being produced and how, for example, computers is taking over some of the more mundane tasks that has been done by humans before and some of the things that we possibly lose in this uh, disconnect. So it's a really fascinating book if you are interested in astronomy and you are more interested in sort of the technical and specific side of things, like what is actually going on behind the scenes to get the da data that um, they produce, um, then this might be interesting for you. Um, I, I really enjoyed especially the talk about the fact that telescopes have to be a, in a really specific location and have to have really controlled conditions in order to actually get the data that we think is um, 
we just see this small part of the actual data production and I thought that seeing all of the steps in getting there was really fascinating especially because you don't usually see the, these things because the telescope uh, locations are so remote so that you don't necessarily come into contact with this sort of thing um, unless you get uh, a scientist's perspective so I really enjoyed that aspect of this book. And the last one that I've already read is The Human Cosmos, uh, A Secret History of the Stars by Joe Marchant. This is more of an anthropological or cultural history of how stargazing has influenced various aspects of human life. She talks about, for example, the measuring of time and how that has uh, developed from something that uh, was originally using the stars in a much more direct sense and how uh, the development of clocks and more sort of mechanized forms of timekeeping has um, has created sort of a disconnect again from from the movement of uh, the planet. She talks about uh, biological uh, cycles and how uh, we are influenced by um, by, for example, the moon, but also how um, the pollution of light, widespread use of artificial light, how that is um, sort of standing in the way of a lot of biological cycles for, for example, birds migrating and how it sort of disrupts their ability to navigate. But one of the things that I found most interesting was how she talks about the health benefits that we get from watching the stars. So I think this is, uh, while it does talk about a lot of the science knowledge that we have now and have um, sort of the, the development of science and paradigm shifts in science and science production in relation to our understanding of our planet in relation to others and, and ourselves in relation to the cosmos, um, what this mostly talks about is sort of the cultural meaning that we've given the stars and, and the cosmos in a wider sense. Uh, and I think if you're more interested in the human side of things, uh, aside from the human rather than the scientific side of things, that this might be more up your alley. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this one. So um, as I said, there are definitely a lot of uh, space-related uh, nonfiction that has been released this year and one of the ones that I'm really excited about is The Planets by Andrew Cohen with Professor Brian Cox. This is a little bit of a cheat because the hardback I think came out last year but the paperback came out in March if, uh, if I rem remember correctly and it's just a book about the planets. I think introducing them and sort of what makes them um, unique in our solar system. Uh, I've been really interested in exploring uh, the other planets aside from Earth and um, Mars, so uh, I'm really, really intrigued by this one. And I know that these, um, Brian Cox specifically, uh, is known for being sort of a, a science promoter, I guess. Like, he, I feel like he's been uh, in television shows or something like that, so it does seem like he, will, he would have a pro fairly approachable style to science, so really, really excited for that one. Another one that is related to Mars exploration is The Sirens of Mars by uh, Searching for Life on Another World uh, by Sarah Stewart Johnson. Johnson's fascination with Mars began as a child, turning over rocks with her father and looking at planets in the night sky. She now conducts field work in some of Earth's most hostile environments. Here, with poetic pre precision, she interlaces her own personal journey as a female scientist and a mother. In the process, she shows how the story of Mars is also a, sto a story about Earth. Um, this other world has been our mirror, our foil, a telltale reflection of our own anxieties and yearnings. So it sounds like it's sort of a similar style to The Last Scar Stargazers, but with a specific look at Mars exploration. And I think that the whole uh, Mars exploration being reflective of our understanding of our own planet is definitely something that came up in the human cosmos as well. Uh, our look for alien species and how that has fueled the exploration of Mars uh, itself. I'm on hold for this at the library, so I can't wait to get to it. Another one that I'm really, really excited for is The Smallest Lights in the Universe by Sarah Seeger. Uh, this is another one that is written by a scientist. It is written by an astrophysicist. Uh, interweaves the story of her search for meaning and solace after losing her first husband to cancer her unflagging search for an Earth-like exoplanet and her unexpected discovery of new love. 
So I think it seems like it's sort of a combination of personal and professional memoir and I tend to really like that especially if it's a topic that I'm unfamiliar with. I haven't read anything related to exoplanets and I, I, to be honest I feel like I have a hard time even grasping what it, it really means. So I think it will be nice to have that personal thing to sort of, uh, the personal narrative to sort of grab onto um, the more I get introduced to new topics. Um, this one, as well as Sirens of Mars, I think was in my anticipated releases of the year video. Um, yeah, I, I'm still really interested in this one, so I will probably see if uh, my library has it. Or maybe even buy it at the end of the year, we'll see. And that, another one that I've come across uh, through my search is How to Die in Space, A Journey Through Dangerous Astrophysical Phenomena by Paul M. Sutter. And I think this is... Um, more of a general uh, book. So it says, a brilliant and breathtaking vivid tour of the universe describing the physics of the dangerous, the deadly, and the scary in the cosmos. From mundane comets in our solar backyard to exotic remnants of the Big Bang, from dying stars to young galaxies, the universe may be, may be beautiful, but it's treacherous. Uh, through metaphors and straightforward language, it breathes life into astrophysics, unveiling how particles and forces and fields interplay to create the drama in the heavens above us. So it sounds like this is more uh, on the science side of things, but in a more, in a hopefully fairly approachable style with a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek humor side of things, it sounds like. Um, and I'm really interested in this one because, as I said, astrophysics, I mean, I get the space topic related to the human meaning of space and how how much we have valued uh, all of our understanding of space, but as soon as you get into physics, I tend to be a little bit, a little bit less um, confident. So uh, if if there's a humorous tone to this book, then that would definitely be helpful. Then we have Spacefarers: How Humans Will Settle the Moon, Mars, and Beyond, uh, by Christopher Vanieck. And this one says, a wry and compelling take on the who, how, and why of near future colonies in space. From bone whittling, microgravity to eye popping profits, the risk and rewards of space settlement has never been so close at hand. So it definitely seems like this is specifically looking at the potential of colonizing other planets, which is something that comes up in Once Upon a, Tar Once Upon a Time I Lived on Mars, um, that I found really interesting, especially because um, there's a p specific type of people who can afford to um, finance the kind of Mars exploration that we're seeing right now, and probably the kind of uh, Mars journeys when that is possible. Um, and of course, the people who are paying will also have a hand in the form that the the tr the traveling and, and the exploration itself is taking shape. Uh, and so there's some ethical things related to the whole colonization, related to that, and the, the financial background to um, the exploration. This seems a bit more niche uh, related to, in comparison to the other ones, but I'm still interested in this one. Um, and I will probably keep my eye on this one for more reviews used to come out. The last book I wanted to talk about here is The Search for a Life on Mars, The Greatest Scientific Detective Story of All Time by Elizabeth Howell and Nicholas Booth. So this one, again, Mars Exploration, you can see a theme here and the, the reason I think for so many books related to Mars being published this year is because of the, the Mars rover that was launched in the summer this year. I actually watched that live. Uh, it was fantastic to, to, to see. Um, yeah, the description of this one says that as well. Published to coincide with the launch of NASA's Perseverance rover mission this summer. The definite account of our quest to find life on the red planet. So this sounds like it's more of a sort of full scope history of Mars exploration. And that is the reason that I'm so interested in this one. Because the other books, I think, is looking more at the current time and some sort of hints at the history and how we got to where we are today. But this book seems like it's much more going back to the beginning of why we were, became interested in Mars in the first place and how our understanding of Mars has evolved over over the decades. Uh, can't wait to get my hands on this one. I think 
this will end up on my wish list for Christmas this year. So those are all of the books that I wanted to talk about today. Let me know if you've read any of these or if you're interested in reading any of them. I would love to know. Or as I said, if you have any other space nonfiction that has been published this year that I haven't mentioned here, feel free to share them below as well. I would love to know uh, and just add more space nonfiction to my TBR. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say today. I hope you're doing well and you're taking care of yourselves. I will talk to you soon.